Hello friends and welcome. This is Wendy with Love and Stampin'. I am so excited you're here with me today. We are going to be making some cards with Pajama Crafter Stamps stamp sets today. I'm using um, two different ones, Sliding By and Flippin' Best, and then I've got the dies for the Sliding By. And speaking of sliding by, we are going to make some slider cards. So um, I'm using Simon Hurley's layering stencils. I'm going to talk about these just a little bit, though, um, after I use them because I, I had a little mishap. So I want to share that with you. And then, um, yeah, we're using cardstock and inks and just fun stuff. Now, at the time of me recording this video, I still have my 49er nails uh, on. <laughs> um, I've since changed those out and we all know what happened. It was a sad day for 49er fans. Anyway, um, we are going to start by cutting this piece of cardstock. Um, we're not cutting it down. We're going to cut a slit in it. So we're going to start at the one and a half inch mark and we are going to cut to the two and a half inch mark lift it up and we did that by the way half an inch from the bottom so you want to put your your um paper with the landscape side at the top of the trimmer you're going to cut from at one and a half to two and a half inches and then we are going to turn the cardstock you see me hesitating here because i'm actually going to flip it over for you put the where you cut that first slit at the top and then cut from the half inch mark all the way up to the two inch mark and then you're going to repeat that on the other side and then turn the cardstock and repeat it again so essentially you're cutting out this little bitty one inch by one and a half inch rectangle now why is it that size well it's that size because of the size of my little gift that's going on top so my little gift that's going on top of this spot is two inches by two inches. So the slit needs to be smaller than that so it doesn't stick up above the gift. Now, bear with me because this is all going to come together as you see this card come together. But for now, we're making slider type cards. OK, so what we're doing right now is making the sliding mechanism. Now, I do want to share that I was refreshed with this idea by watching one of Christina Warner's recent videos. Um, I have known how to make slider cards for many years, but um, I saw a card she made recently and I was like, you know what? I'm going to make one of those. Dang it. So here, let's talk about these Simon Hurley stencils. They're fantastic. There's four stencils. There are different size polka dots. I think they're super cute. However, I would not recommend using them in conjunction with the Altenew sticky mat. Do you see what's on my mat? Some of the plastic, I guess is what you could call it, peeled away from the stencil and stuck to my mat. Not real happy about that. So I don't know if that speaks to the mask or the stencil, <clears throat> as far as a quality issue or if that is you know like a big boo-boo to I mean to me in my opinion the whole point of the all to new low tax sticky mat which I get asked about all the time by the way you guys are always asking me about that thing um that's like what it's for is to put your stick your stencils down to it so you can you know do your ink blending over the top don't do it with Simon Hurley stencils unless for some odd reason, this is just a random coincidence of this particular pack of stencils. I don't know because I don't have more sets than that one. So I'm just throwing it out there as a warning to you. Um, it will peel away some of your stencil, which I found to be a little bit aggravating. Okay, so here we have stamped this cute little penguin. And we are coloring with Copic markers. I sped up all the ink blending and I sped up all the coloring because truthfully, that's not what we're here for. We're here to do the slider card. I fussy cut these guys out. I used Perfect Pearls to do some ink splattering type stuff on everything and cleaned it off my mat. 
And then I'm taking the little present that I made and I'm ink blending on top of it. And the two colors I used for ink blending were picked raspberry and spun sugar. So that's how I made my card base. And that little chomper corner tool thing, you can get that on Amazon. It just corner rounds your edges. I've had mine for probably 15 years. Um, they work great and I rarely get it out anymore. So I got it out for this because I thought it would just look cute. Here I am using my Cottontail Embossing Buddy Powder Tool from Honey, uh, sorry, from the Rabbit Hole Designs. And I'm ink blending a, M er, good Lord, heat embossing <laughs> ah, sentiment on the top of this gift. Ah, <sighs> why are words hard today, guys? So, um, I'm using black because my penguin was black. And so I was trying to tie in some of that black. And I think it looks really nice. I used the Altenew Obsidian Black Ink for this, which probably is the best black ink pad I've ever used in my entire life. It stamps with incredible precision. It is, however, a pigment-based ink. So you can't use it for certain things and it does stay wet longer than like a dye-based ink would or a, or a hybrid ink. So those are just things to be aware of. But in the realm of stamping sentiments, it is the most crisp, accurate stamping I've ever gotten out of any ink pad ever. So what take that for what it's worth. Here I'm using some foam strips from Stampin' Up! that I have, and I'm going to remove the backing and add this down to the front of the card, covering up the hole. Here's the idea. The penguin is going to go in and out of the hole, <laughs> in and out of the gift, okay? And originally my idea for this was to make that little gift um, look like a gift, like draw in ribbon and color it that way. I tried that. I failed miserably. So I just changed it up to make it easier. And had I not told you that that was my original plan, you would have never known the difference. So now I have to make it so that this penguin will pull up using that little pull tab. By the way, that pull tab is cut at one and a half, no, one and a quarter by five and a half. And now I'm adding my foam strips to each side of the pool tab. On the penguin, I've added adhesive and removed it at the bottom of the penguin so that the, the strip will pull up and stop, okay? That's important. So whatever image you add at the bottom of your pool tab, it needs to, you need to put the adhesive at the bottom of the thing that's pulling up. So as you can tell by my little situation here that I created, you're not going to be able to see the entire penguin when you pull him up. You only see the top of him. If I would have done things a little differently, you, well, no, there would have been no way to make this. Yes, there would have been. You would have had to have seen the top of the penguin a little bit in order to see his whole body when I pulled him up. I personally thought it was cute that just the top portion of him poked out. Um, so I was fine with it. So that is this card. I mean, that's finished. And it's not that hard. I know you're like, that was hard. It's not. Christina Warner did a video without giving measurements because she's freaking phenomenal like that. And she just was like, just cut a rectangle in the paper. I'm going to link to her video below so that you can see it. I gave you measurements on my little area, but that's only going to work if you duplicated my card very similarly. You would need to, yeah, just really duplicate it almost exactly the same because it's all going to depend on the size of your image if it will work or not. Okay, so here I am coloring a winter ice skating scene. People... This turned out phenomenal, according to me, because I am so new at doing stuff like this and learning how to color scenes. I can't even tell you. However, if you think mine looks decent, 
girl, honey, you need to go watch Sandy Allnock's video that I'm going to link for you below this video. And you will see the most phenomenal coloring of ice or an ice pond you've ever seen. So <clears throat> here in the video, I just want to say I am really sorry for the light flickering. The reason the light is flickering is because I sped this video up to 20 times its normal speed and the sun was coming in and out as far as like being and, and with the video sped up, it made it look like it was flickering. So I really hope that didn't bother your eyes, kind of bothered mine. So I feel really bad for you if, if it was disturbing. I'm sorry. I didn't want to cut all of that out though. Now here on this little slit that I've cut, you see that I cut it a quarter of an inch thick and I just went eh, about this long. That's literally what I did because I wanted to see if I could be successful with cutting out a slit without measurements. And I was, I did not measure it. Now on my first card that I shared with you, I measured, I measured from the bottom the sides, everything to make sure everything would fit correctly. With this card, I didn't measure anything. I was just like, well, let's see what happens. And it still worked. So I just want to, I just wanted to share that with you because I want to encourage you that if you're trying to make a slider card for the first time and you've never made one, just cut a slit and here's all you really have to know. Here's the big secret for slider, slider cards, okay? The piece that you're gluing to the top has to be bigger than the slit. That's tip one. Tip two, the piece that's going to go through the slit that is going to connect to the item that you're going to pull that is going to slide has to be wide enough for the adhesive strip to fit through. So in this case, on this card, that slit had to be wide enough for that foam strip to fit through there because all this is going to attach to is a little penguin that I'm going to die cut out that is going to attach to a strip of paper behind the slit and it's going to be attached by a little piece of foam strip. That's it. It is so simple. So if you want to make a slider card, that's that is the, that's the formula. That is the secret to making a successful slider card. The image that you're going to attach to the slider mechanism has to be bigger than the slit. The slit has to be big enough to fit the adhesive. And then you just cut the slit and then your pull tab, which I'm cutting right here. I cut it a half inch by four and a quarter. Just don't make your pull tab bigger than the width of your card or the height of your card. So this is a quarter inch by, so my piece that I colored was four by five and a quarter. This piece, this little pull tab piece is a, a half inch by four and a quarter. So now all I have to do is draw in my little lines that's going to make my canal I need to put foam strips on each side of that and I have to attach the little penguin to the little slider mechanism that you just saw me do. Okay. So here we go. I'm making my channel first with my foam strips. And that's why so much of this video is sped up. That is not the part of building the slider because I definitely did elements to this card that were long and involved or both cards, actually the ink blending, the coloring, all of that. But that's not necessary. You don't have to make elaborate scenes to make a slider or a pull up slider or any of that. All these are are simple pull tab slider cards. They I feel like a lot of times when people see cards like these, they are very intimidated by them because they seem really difficult to make and they're really not. If you just break it down into simplicity, that's all you have to do. So here, there's a couple lessons learned on this one, okay? So number one is we're gonna tape this little penguin right to the front of this card. So I'm just using some low-tack sticky tape. 
to be totally honest, I cannot remember where I got that tape from. It's like that mint tape. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to turn this over and you can see that my little pull tab fits inside my channel. Okay, great. Now I have to adhere my little pull tab to the penguin. So you can see the penguin peeking through the little slit there, the back of his belly. So now I'm just going to take my little foam strip that I've cut down to fit the width of him. So it's nice and small. And I'm going to add him or the adhesive to him. And now all I have to do is pull away. <laughs> I'm just making sure everything fits. That's why I'm pausing because I'm, I'm kind of giggling at myself right now. Um, now all I have to do is pull everything away and stick it together. I do need to add the little word pull onto this pull tab because I think your recipient is not going to know to pull this unless you tell them to. The pull tab stamp set is from Pear Blossom Press and um, it's got pull, push, like all kinds of little words like that for these types of cards. So here I'm just kind of like double checking everything, making sure that this sticks out far enough, making sure that the word pool is going to fit right there. And then I'm going to bring in my Hero Arts Intensified Black Ink and I'm going to stamp the word pool. And I'm stamping it like facing away and vice versus the other one where I stamped it like down towards the card. Then I'm going to remove my adhesive here on my little penguin. And I'm going to put my pull tab in place where it belongs. And then you're going to see where I have a little glitch. Okay. So we're going to pull this off. Removing the tape so that my penguin can now move. And I'm going to test everything out before I go to the next step of adhering everything together. Which is a good thing. So when you're making these, you're learning make sure you do all the things that need to be done. So in this case, I noticed that when I pushed this penguin all the way back to the edge, that the pull tab slider went out the other side. That was a problem. So here's how I fixed it. I just trimmed off some of the pull tab slider that was on the edge that was going past and I took a little piece of foam tape and just put a blocker there. That's it. Super easy. I ended up having to trim a little more off because that didn't go in quite far enough. So I just kind of pulled it back out, stuck my scissors in there, gave it another little trimmy trim and voila, now it's perfect. So now my sliding mechanism works perfectly. And all I have to do is add foam strips, and add the backing to this card. And that's it. The card's finished after that. These cards are really, truly not that difficult to make. And as I was trying to say earlier, I feel like sometimes we see cards like this and we make up in our mind that it's just going to be too difficult to make like a slider card or a pop-up card or whatever, because it has these extra added mechanisms that can kind of be intimidating, to be really honest. I was able to go back and watch Christina Werner's video a couple of times and put together how I wanted to do two different slider cards. So the first card I made, I kind of mimicked hers so that I could get a little bit of a grasp on how to do it. And then this card, I just winged it. I just cut a slit and I was like, okay, this isn't so hard. Actually, it's really, really easy. You just need to connect the little doodauber on the front to the slider mechanism pull tab on the back and make sure it slides. And that's it. And then you just make a little channel for it and you're good to go. I mean, it really is easier than one might expect. So then I needed a card base for this card. So I'm cutting a piece of basic white thick cardstock in half, scoring it at five and a half, and then I'll have a card base that I can adhere this sliding mechanism to. So 
other than that, friends, um, we haven't had much of a story time here real recently. We have had just some fun stuff going on. Nothing real crazy. Um, here on the home front, we are still baking our own breads. Yes, I am. And, um, yes, the 49ers lost. That was a sad day for me. I did shed some tears. I'm not going to lie. Mostly because, not because the 49ers lost. Let's be real people. It's a game. But because they were my grandpa's team. And ever since he died, I've wanted them to win the Super Bowl. They came super close the year right after he died. And then this was our second chance to win the Super Bowl since he's passed away. So really, it's a nostalgia thing for me. And, um, so I just was really missing him that day. I was missing the fact that I couldn't call him and all those things, you know, those things are hard. Look at how cute this is. It is just absolutely adorable. I love how this turned out. Um, I'm going to go in and add some details. Now I'm going to make some snow in the background and I'm also going to cover those trees in a little bit of snow because I just really like using the white gel pen to do those types of things. And I do feel like they add just a fun element to your card. Now, I know you might be like, well, this is kind of like a Christmas card. My intention was for this to be a wintry card. Uh, it's still winter time, really. I mean, it really truly is. And here in California, we have been getting hit with some super weird weather, weather I've never witnessed here, to be totally honest. We had some scattered thunderstorms the other day that very much reminded me of the South. Um, I did live in North Carolina for a short time in my life, and I, it reminded me of that kind of weather. It literally came over us, was like a monsoon rain, and then it was gone within a few minutes and the sun came out. And I was like, okay, what is happening? Like we're living in the upside down because that's not typical California weather at all. Uh, here, I just was like, man, I need a, I kind of want a little something in that area there. And I didn't know if I wanted to put the other stack of trees there. And that little fishing penguin was just too big. And then I added the trees and I thought, well, that was it. That's perfect. It just needed that other little set of trees. So I'm using my precision glue press to add these trees. And then these cards will be finished after I, of course, add some little snow to the trees. So yeah, is it still winter in your neck of the woods? I mean, I hear that there's places in the Northeast that are getting like unseasonably warm temperatures. And we're over here in California getting unusual weird weather for us. It's just been crazy. Down in Southern California, they have gotten tons of flooding and they've had quite a, quite a lot of problems down there. Um, I don't live in that part of California. California is a huge state. So, um, I don't live in that area, so I we haven't experienced any of the flooding or anything like that. My husband, where he works, did get a call for mutual aid, which basically just means like they might send some crews from where he works down to Southern California to help them out. It's not uncommon for utilities to do that for each other. Uh, if you are new around here, my husband is a power lineman, so that is something that you know, could happen in our future at some point. Um, if they decide they need extra help down South, I'm not sure yet. So yeah, that's basically what's going on here. Everything else is good. I did have one of you ask me recently how Macy's doing with her horse and she's doing great. And there's my two finished cards, you guys. Everything is good. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you need any of the products that you saw, there's a link below the video that says measurements and supplies or supplies or something like that. You click that link, takes you to my blog. And over there, you can look at photos and grab all of the links that you need and different things like that. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.